Welcome back to our channel. We're Stefano and Sasha. We've been up to a lot lately, so we're going to fill you in. Last year, we self-converted a shuttle bus and traveled to Baja, California. Then we swapped that for a truck camper, and we spent four months driving down to Costa Rica and back, where we rescued our beautiful new puppy, Nala. Now we're on to a new project. We are converting this ambulance into a full-time home on wheels. As always, give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it, and don't forget to subscribe to our channel to see more. Welcome back guys to the last episode of our ambulance van build. Today we're going to show you the final result of the process and the art work that we put through. Please let us know what you think in the comments. It's a 2008 Ford E350. It was an ambulance when we bought it. We'll show you what it looked like before. It was a really cool build beforehand but it had that ambulance vibe that we were not going with, so we did have to take everything out and make it much cuter. We actually completed this build in only four weeks, which I feel like is just record time for converting a van. And I'm gonna show you inside, go honey. kitchen cabinet is our gray water tank we just got a small portable gray water tank for this build which works really well and then on the other side we have our tidy little electrics box so with our electrical system a big benefit of building out an ambulance is you already get 
some electrical, but also a big negative about buying an ambulance is you also get a bunch of electrical that you have to sort through, figure out what goes to what, what to keep and what to get rid of. And that was kind of stressful and kind of hectic, but we figured it out in the end. We actually kept the 1000 watt inverter charger that the ambulance came with. Um, it's really cool that you could plug the ambulance into a house to charge the batteries as well. And then we put 300 watts of solar on the roof. As with our bus build, we love Renogy. We put in uh, three 100 watt solar panels. And then we just got the Renogy kit with a solar charge controller. We have a DC fuse box. So all of our lights, our fan and our water pump, our DC system. And we have some bus bars and things like that. We didn't actually have to build an AC system with a circuit breaker box because we already had the inverter. So that was a huge benefit. We also have a couple of outlets with the inverter, both your 120 volt plugs as well as USB plugs. And it's super easy. The inverter just has a little on off button to turn it on and off. Um, and it's really easily accessible. So that's our electric system. And we found that that has been plenty for us so far. This is the other half of our kitchen. We were originally going to put a uh, normal stove top in, but we actually decided at the last minute to go with a removable kind of more camping cooktop fed by propane. And I'm really happy that we did that because we have all this extra space and we didn't actually put a table in this van, which I'll talk about later. But this is a really nice place. You could sit down your laptop and do some work. You could have a coffee or you could use this as a table. I actually built this cabinet myself. I drilled off my fingertip in the process, but it turned out really cute. And inside we have our propane tank and we have our little portable stove. So this just comes on top. We definitely needed to put the stove uh, next to the window in these smaller vans. That's a really good idea for fire safety. So that's why we position the stove here. And we thought by having removable, maybe someone could cook outside if they wanted to as well. So that is our entire kitchen. Now I will show you the rest of the van, including our really amazing and unique bed design. So we have two bench seats here. We have four inch foam on top of them and then we have the same four inch foam on the bed. And this bed is really cool because right now it's about a twin size bed, a little bit bigger. And I could lay lengthwise this way and I would fit. But I'm pretty short, I'm only five foot two. Anyone taller than me would not fit here. So we actually made it so that you can convert it out to what is a queen size bed. It's a huge bed. And this is our favorite part of the van. We feel like this really maximizes the space. If we just put a queen size bed in, it would just be kind of weird because it's just a bed and a kitchen and you wouldn't have this kind of hangout area. And our other idea was to do a couch to bed conversion, but that would mean making the bed every day, putting the fitted sheet on every day. Who wants to do that? Not me. And it would also mean needing somewhere to store your pillows and your blankets during the day. So this is kind of the best of both worlds. You get a little day bed that you can hang out in after you go for a surf, and then you can pull it out at night to extend it for two. So I'll show you how that works. To convert the bed, we have four pieces of foam. Two of them were from the bench seats and the other two are just extra. We have not gotten our cushion covers yet, so don't judge us. Um, so we just remove the foam and then we can pull this bed out. It's gonna slide along the back of the seats. So then each piece of foam can go in whatever order. They are all the same size. We also have a YouTube video, which we will link, about how we built this bed. So you can, if you're interested in building a bed like this, you can follow that. So now you can see this is a huge bed. When the bed converts out fully, you lay lengthwise here. You have a full queen size bed and you could honestly fit like four people across here. It's very luxurious for a fan bed. On this side of the bed, we have our USB outlets. We have our light switches. So the bed has two puck lights over it, which is on a separate switch than the main four puck lights. 
We did that so that if you're just kind of laying in bed and you want dim lights, you can just pop these two on. We put a beautiful little shelf in between these two cabinets. We couldn't put another cabinet here because when this is a seat, you won't be able to sit there. So we raised it a little bit and put the shelf here so that someone can still sit underneath on the bench seat. And we just popped on a little cord. We use this cord for our curtains too. In case, uh, so this could be like a bookshelf, you could put candles or little baskets on there. And then this is our kind of clothing storage cabinet here. So it's on magnets, it stays up, and it's pretty spacious. If you saw our bus tour, it's a lot less closet space than we had in our bus, but it's really all you need. We honestly had like too much storage in the bus. And then on this side, we wanted to keep it like pretty open. So instead of putting two cabinets, we got these cute little um, baskets and poles from Ikea. We put a little piece of feature wood behind it to brace it, but this also matches the shelf on the other side. And then you can throw things like headphones and books and toiletries and other things in here. We also have a fan right on top of the bed. This is something that we wish we did in the bus build. And this actually really cools down the place really well. It's not a Max Air fan, it's a slightly cheaper one that we found on Amazon, but we used it in our other build and it works really well. It has uh, three speeds to come in and two speeds to take air out. And you can also drive with the uh, hatch open and the fan on, which is cool. So that's pretty much it for the bed area. I'll show you a couple of more things in the build and all of the storage that we've built into it. Underneath both bench seats, we also have some additional storage. So we really tried to maximize storage in this van. So we have some storage over the wheel well, and we also have our plumbing system and our fresh water tank underneath there. A couple of construction facts with this build. We did fully insulate the walls and the ceiling. We did put in a plywood subfloor and we actually, this is the third time we have used this exact flooring. We put it in our camper renovation and we also put it in our bus and filmed a video of that and put it on YouTube. This is a seven millimeter thick waterproof laminate flooring from Floor and Decor. Um, previously, we had a bit of a thinner um, flooring in the bus, so we liked that this one's a little thicker and nice and sturdy. We have seen in a lot of van builds the like sticker flooring, but we feel like that's kind of too thin and not durable. And uh, this kind of color just goes with everything. It goes with lighter wood, it goes with darker wood. So we are really, really happy with this. A couple of other things that maybe you have noticed are missing from our build, other than like our personal belongings, is a table. We didn't actually put a table in. We were debating just a table leg where I'm sitting and a, and a stationary table here, but we didn't like how that closed off the space. So we didn't put a table, but we did plan a space to put a table. So the idea was that we would put a table on the inside of this cabinet and it would be one of those kind of swivel tables that everyone has in the van. Um, we just haven't done that. We like how open it is now. We also don't have a fridge. We did wire for a DC fridge, but we haven't decided what kind of fridge we want yet. Stefano likes the little mini fridge kind of apartment style fridges that we used in our bus. I like the kind of like pull out cooler fridges with the little cup holders on top. So we're at a bit of a standstill with the fridge situation, but the idea is that the fridge would sit behind the passenger seat or the center console in the front is actually removable. So we could also put the fridge there. That way you can get snacks from the fridge while you're driving, but uh, that just feels pretty dangerous. I feel like we would eat all the snacks while we were driving. So we did plan for places to put the fridge, but we just have not decided on one yet. So on the side of this door here out the back, we have some cool storage. And I thought it would be really handy to put like toiletries in here because we have a hanging shower. We also have two more of these on the side doors. These are really great for like books or candles or toiletries or beers or anything like that. And these were original with, when it was an ambulance. And then we have our underneath bed storage. We have a lot of storage here. 
We did design it with this little door in here so that you could fit a long board because we both surf long board um, through there. We like that it's a big open space. You could also turn this into like an extendable drawer if you felt like you needed more storage. But our idea was that this was kind of like the garage. And then on this side, we have our fresh water tank. We have a 25 gallon fresh water tank. We also have our water pump and our accumulator underneath there. And then we have a little pipe with a shut on and off valve. And this is for our portable hanging propane powered hot water shower. So the hot water shower hangs up here in this little nook that we've cut in the door. We did not get around to making a shower curtain yet, but the idea was that you could hang a curtain between both of the doors. And then on this side of the bed, we do actually have our hot water shower here. We have never opened it. And then through the back, we actually have some full length storage. So on the left side of the bed, we, um, we closed it off with this shiplap panel here, which uh, was a remnant from our shiplap roof. But on this side, we kept it open between the bed and the bench seat so that you could fit something really big under there. For example, a short board surfboard, a uh, table and chairs for outdoors, or like a beach umbrella. So you have some pretty solid like five and a half feet of storage if you need it. So we're pretty stoked about that. So that's all from us. We really hope you enjoyed this build. We definitely had a lot of fun transforming this ambulance. If you've been following us, you know this is our third renovation. And what we love most about this job is that every time we create something different, like a new van, a new layout, a new design, which is fun and exciting. And honestly, we can't wait for the next one. That's pretty much it for our van build tour. Let us know your thoughts in the comments and check out our bus build tour to see our previous build. Otherwise, we will see you next time. As always, thank you for watching. Give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it and subscribe to our channel to see more.